More perspective. We're joined by Sangeeta Iyer, the founder of the Voice for Asian Elephants Society, uh, joining us from the U.S. So thanks for the early hours. Appreciate you uh, being with us. Uh, to start broadly here, how threatened and, and, and endangered are, are the world's wild elephant populations today in 2022? Absolutely. They are rapidly dwindling. There are approximately 400,000 Asian elephants in Africa. I'm sorry, African elephants in Africa and only 40,000 Asian elephants across the world, fully 27,000 in India. This is their last bastion. Wow. So they're very wow. endangered and they're diminishing at a rapid rate because the population in India is expected to be, you know, surpassing China by next year when initially it was supposed to surpass in 2020. So, you know, it's a smaller country, it's the sixth largest nation, but at the same time, there's also a lot of, you know, Asian elephant population. So the conflict is intense and it's escalating by the day. Now, uh, looking at the, the world here, I mean, no one wants to see the elephants disappear. I know there's things that are pushing them in that direction here, but most of us know elephants in zoos, in cities where we come from. Uh, are, are zoos part of the problem? Are zoos bad? Well, captivity in general is, you know, it kills any elephant, any animal for that matter, because these elephants are supremely intelligent. Their brain size is three times as large as human brain, and their cortical brain is highly evolved. They're very family oriented, and these intelligent animals are torn from their families, tortured to submission, and then exploited for profit in the zoos, circuses, and most insidious, behind the veil of culture and religion. Yeah. And this is what yeah. I'm really, really fighting to end. The thing is, there are people that just don't understand that these intelligent animals suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, just like we humans do. So every they're so much like us in many, many ways. They love their babies. They take care of, you know, the nannies and the aloe nannies. Like they all work together in a wonderful herd. It's a beautifully matriarchal Incredible. culture. Yeah. Sagan, I want to make sure that we have a time to, uh, uh, is there an upside? I mean, is there a good case scenario playing out somewhere here? I know the ivory trade has been demonized in so many parts of the world. What can the average person like me do about the situation with the elephants? So what I've done is I've written this book called Gods in Shackles, What Elephants Can Teach Us About Empathy, Resilience, and Freedom. And I also want to show you Lord Ganesha. This is Lord Ganesha. And he is actually the embodiment of elephants. And these elephants are worshipped on the one hand. At the same time, they're desecrated. So people need to, first of all, become aware of the situation, how captivity literally kills them. And then they can take steps. And so when you log on to VFAES.org, Voice for Asian Elephant Society, we've got a lot of information there. People can become part of the solution because we have about a dozen projects on the ground in India currently as we speak. At the same time, I've produced like multiple short films airing on, you know, several National Geographic channels. Right. And right. Gods and Shackles is a film that is actually screening for free on waterbear.com. So people can watch the film, educate themselves, and become part of these solutions that we are offering. Like, you know, uh, uh, close to so many people's hearts, the, the issues are certainly with uh, such a beloved animal as the elephant. So I appreciate your efforts and for coming on the program with us today on Zoom and drawing awareness to the issues. Thanks.